Hey guys, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And today I'm asking the question, when does security become detrimental to actually functioning? And the reason why I'm asking this is for two different reasons, because we have to talk about both offensive and defensive cybersecurity, cyber warfare, all this kind of stuff. Now on the offensive side, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because some reporting in the Wall Street Journal yesterday basically says that the Trump administration, the current presidential administration, has not been informing Congress basically of a secret directive that they have given the military, the U.S. military, on cyber weaponry. And despite requests of lawmakers, they basically have not been really getting this information. Now, the concern is that the Pentagon is increasingly deploying cyber operations against adversaries, meaning offensive cyber warfare, uh, including countries like Iran, which we've obviously had some issues with, and basically they're not keeping the congressional oversight, meaning the civilian oversight of the military, informed of this. Now, I think we can all understand the operational side of if we are engaged in, let's say, active warfare, we don't exactly want our generals going on CNN saying, yeah, we're bombing whatever tomorrow, you know, but at the same token, there is civilian oversight for that, which is what Congress is supposed to be. And it's not like uh, the members of Congress should be going out to the public saying, yeah, we're bombing somebody tomorrow. Um, it's there to ensure that the military is keeping in line with the wishes of the people and the administration. This is the whole checks and balances thing. But at what point does operational secrecy or security in this case, become a detriment to the functioning of our society, the functioning of our military and all of that. Now, conversely on the defensive side, we have some very interesting things as well. I walk into a lot of organizations, corporations and otherwise, that basically are concerned that defensive cybersecurity, meaning that which is gonna protect their users or their workforce, is gonna become so cumbersome that their people can't work. And what I typically tell them is that the goal of a good cyber defense strategy is to wrap the user in cybersecurity and remove needless choices. So maybe outside of, let's say, a multi-factor authenticated login, when you're getting into something, it doesn't impede your workflow. Accidentally go to the wrong site, you know, type in google.com as opposed to google.com, you're going to see it. Try to accidentally download a virus unknowingly, you're going to see it when it blocks you. Try to go to the control panel and uninstall your antivirus. We've actually seen that. It's going to block you. But... If you are just going through your normal workflow, it's not a problem. So at what level do you think that both for offensive and defensive, cybersecurity or secrecy um, or just security in general is going to actually be a detriment to, to a person's job, to the ability of a military to function, and on and on? I think it's a question that we need to ask, and I think there's a lot of standards that people need to realize exist in both offensive and defensive, uh, you know, cyber anything. So take that for what it's worth. But I think it's something that we need to understand. And I think that's something that I, a lot of people need to understand in their lives that, quite frankly, cybersecurity is there to help not harm. It's there to help not really slow you down. And for the most part, it tends not to. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.